too many things in life that instable instagram you know everything's right now go to the doctors get your hrt and within three weeks hey presto you'll be a new version of yourself well actually some things are worth investing in and taking time you don't plant a seed and hope that it's going to be flourishing and flowering within a week's time you nurture it you water it you put it you put it in the right soil you give it ingredients well treat yourself to be that beautiful plant that you want to grow grow Welcome my guest, Heather Jackson, the founder of Gen M. Uh, Heather's super excited about this conversation. We have been waiting uh, for it. I set up cons- uh, our podcast, I think, two months ago and finally did arrive. You are a busy lady running around with a very powerful mission. Uh, and yes, Heather, please let us know who you are, how all started for you. We are all waiting to hear more about you. All right, well, thank you very much for that, Daria. And uh, thank you to anyone who's actually going to be listening to this and, and bearing with me on my journey of menopause in the hope that I can uh, impact and influence it everybody else's menopause experience to be better than today than yesterday. So I'm Heather Jackson, I'm 53 years old, I'm perimenopausal, I'm a mother of two adult children, 20, 24 and 26, and I've also got a dog called Stanley. And apart from that, I also am the co-founder along with my founder as well, Sam Simister of Gen M. Gen M is the menopause partner of brands. But before I talk about that, I'll just give you a little bit of background to my life and why I did decide that even at 50 years old, it was time to start another business and and make a difference here for the purpose of menopause. So prior to prior to Gen M, I, uh, I had my own business. I actually worked with 150 global organizations and 30,000 women. Um, ensuring that their careers went from middle management to the executive, they were guided, they were supported better. Like I said, we supported 30,000 women take their careers forward. And why? Because I actually believe that better balance makes better business, makes better society. It wasn't about the rights of women to get there, it was about the equality of opportunity that I've always believed should be there because regardless of gender, sexuality, diversity, ethnicity, everyone deserves to be the best person for the job should get it and I'm firm and I've always believed in that but what we all should have is an equal opportunity to be able to have the chance to go forward and have put ourselves forward. So um, back in back when I was 49 I cashed in on that business um, believing I'd done enough to change the agenda and, and move it forward. I'd been in that agenda 15 years long before the Davis report came out and and everything else that came along, but we, we made huge impact and started the conversation going. And then it had come along with Time's Up and Me Too, and it felt very, very aggressive and toxic. And what I've always done with my business is to change and make purpose happen has always been to actually do it in a purposeful, collaborative, sustainable way. Because right now we need men and women working together. This wasn't about putting, you know, batting against one another or blaming one another. And I just felt that it was moving in a d- different direction. I took a year off, cashed in on the business, kids all happy and, and left home for all their right reasons. And I decided this was gonna be my Thelma and Louise time. I was gonna be swinging from the chandeliers and doing all the the um, the to-do list that I'd always wanted to do, but as a single mother with a, my own business, obviously yeah, are restrained in, in, in some ways on it. So guilt-free, I was going to be traveling, climbing Kilimanjaro, Base Camp Everest, off to Peru, everything that I'd ever dreamed of doing. And um, during that year, I became absolutely knocked back by illness. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I wasn't the same. I was in an emotional wreck. My kids think, thought I'd gone batshit crazy, for want of a better way, word. And I was in and out the doctors in between all, all this traveling and just not feeling myself from really bad brain fog right through to really bad anxiety, emotional, overwhelming, everything from breakdowns in a supermarket because they, they didn't have the strawberry yogurt that I wanted. Everything that was just not me. I was becoming a person that I just didn't recognize. And all my friends thought it was because I'd cashed in on my business and had lost my purpose. And I was actually going, guys, my purpose was to get to this stage in life. You know, I got the cash in the bank, got the kids all, all happy. I've got the ability 
to travel the world. What on earth would I not want? I hadn't lost my purpose. I'd got to the direction I wanted to get to. Anyway, long story short, I met up with my good friend, Sam Simister, who now is my co-founder of Gen M. And we went out for lunch and she said, Heather, what's happened to you in this last year? You've lost your confidence. You've lost so much weight. You look tired. And I just burst into tears and I said, honestly, Sam, I don't know who I am right now. I've just the, the doctors have been through everything. I've been tested for um, Graves' disease. I've been tested for thyroid, you know, thyroid trouble. I've been tested for dementia. I said, no one can put the finger on it, but I know I'm just not myself. And she said, come out to Portugal with me. And I said, in fact, they've put me on antidepressants. And we both laughed at it because it was like, if this is what you need, if this is the stage you get to with money in the bank, kids all happy, you know, your life, absolutely sorted to end up on antidepressants it was like well if this is depression you know i haven't helped anybody else so we had a bit of a giggle about it but a serious giggle if you know what i mean anyway i went out to portugal with her and it was there that she said heather i don't think there's anything wrong with you other than i think you're perimenopausal and i'd never even heard the word and so she went into her office and i went in into the sunshine and googled as you do the word perimenopause and i was absolutely blown away at the fact that I got 26 out of 32 symptoms that perimenopause at the time showed. And it was like, phew, I found what I've got. I found what I need to do now. And I found I'm always a solution finder. If it, and, you know, it was like, right, I can, I, I can work on this. So when Sam came back out of her office, I said, oh, great, Sam, I'm perimenopausal. Let's celebrate. And let's say, uh, this is, this is going to be easy now. Now I know what I've got. I can, I can deal with it. And she said, well, to be fair, Heather, that's where this, it starts, the journey gets hard. She said, because I'm, I'm menopausal and I actually resigned last year because my menopause had got too, ba too bad for me. I was, I was anxious, I was, I'd lost my confidence in the workplace and I, I'm a global director, as you know, she said, traveling the world and I even got panic attacks about going to the airport. You know, something that had been all my life that I love and everything else. So. Anyway, we started to sort of look into it better whilst I was in Portugal uh, over a glass of, or two of wine, should we say. And we realized that, you know, for time poor, busy women, you know, it was a very disparate landscape and everything felt very medical and very dry and everything felt very HRT. When actually, if we are to believe that menopause is, is a, a transition, a natural transition for the majority of us, um, apart from those who unfortunately may have cancer or surgical or early menopause, and that's something else we need to talk about and discuss. But, but you know, we felt that actually just as much as you wouldn't run a marathon in a pair of slippers, why, you know, you, if you were running a marathon, you'd train for it, you'd prepare for it, you'd actually buy the right kit, eat the right food, do the right exercise, but pal around with the right group of people who could actually, you could learn off and everything else. So why was it that we as intelligent women were entering the biggest marathon of our lives so woefully unprepared and getting knocked back by like a bus had been hit by and I, I suddenly realized as well that you know the 30,000 women that I'd been working with really well really hard to encourage them to take their careers forward they were also going to be also hit by perimenopause and menopause and just at a time when society and culture of businesses is allowing us to take our careers to the top as women if we want to take them that far um you know why should it felt really cool to be then knocked over by something that we hadn't seen coming so um sam and i decided that we needed to do something more about this it wasn't just about the medical and the doctors all all, all guiding us because we didn't go to the doctors to find out about puberty we shouldn't need to go to the doctors to find out about menopause so we decided that we did a lot of investigation on what was missing out there and actually the knowledge the signposting the serving of menopause was poorly Poorly, poor, poorly represented and if we take it to why was it poorly re represented and why do we think that menopausal women were being let down by society we did two things on this we launched an invisibility report because Sam's a scientist and a really good businesswoman and she believes in stats whereas I've been much more impulsive back of the fag packet go out on there on on intuition but intuition and and stats absolutely is the right way to go forward 
And it was quite frightening, our invisibility report of, that we interviewed 3,000 3, women with a credible researcher. Um, and actually it turned out that women did feel invisible. They felt let down by society and brands in this period of life. They felt you know, that there was much more to them and actually we needed to be seen and we needed to be heard better now. And, and equal to that, we needed better signposting and serving of the understanding of this midlife transition. So when I say about signposting, and when I say about brands and organisations getting on board this, let me just explain that right now, well, when we set up the business, 2% of the UK population were vegan. And I've got nothing against vegans, my daughter's one. So, you know, it's like not saying anything wrong there. But in this last two years, since COVID and everything else, the, the vegan market has increased to 4%. Now, that's not increased naturally. That's increased because businesses looked at it and started to understand it better, serve it better, signpost it better, you know, new product development it, and, 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 and normalize, normalize veganism, and which is great. But actually, if you think about right now, there are 20% of, uh, of the UK population who are menopausal. Where's our signposting? Where's our product development? Where's our understanding of our customer experience online and offline? You know, we're time poor women who are often through menopause, of raw, anxious, sleep deprived, never mind with the hot sweats and everything else that come because there's 48 symptoms of menopause. So again, surely this was a, an audience that needed to be served better. And I don't mean that businesses we were encouraging or needed to encourage them to milk the menopause. No one says anyone's milking the vegan market. We're just actually helping provide choice and control to how vegans can experience their better vegan life through everything from the food that they eat, to the clothes that they wear, to the products that they buy, to the services and, and to the experience they have. You wouldn't put a, a meat counter next to a vegan counter in a supermarket because you understand that that just wouldn't be right. So why is it that many, many retail stores maybe have a few menopause products, but why, why do they make it so hard for us to find when if we are brain fog, sleep deprived, deprived, overall anxious, surely that's just going to add a worse connection to our experience. So we realized, Sam and I, that despite all the great things that were happening with doctors pushing on the medical side of menopause, you've got as, as of today, the celebrities all raising the awareness and everything else, which is, you know, absolutely brilliant. But actually the reach of brands and organizations to get on board and understand the menopause better for both the consumer and the work colleague was, was paramount to really making a difference here. And why does it make a difference? Because these brands and organizations have incredible reach. You know, you look at your Marks and Spencers who are on board with us, your Boots, your Holland and Barrett's, your Royal <coughs> Mail. You know, we've got 60 of the biggest brands out there who have so much reach with their colleagues and their consumer and across all social demographics. Because I don't know about you, Daria, but it feels very much at the moment through no one's fault, and I'm not blame mongering at all, that the menopause still feels very white and middle class and quite southern. And actually, you know, menopause impacts all social demographics, all culture, and across the globe. I mean, by 2025, there will be one billion women globally who are menopausal. So, you know, let's not think that certain certain fact, fractions of society can can actually have better experiences we all need better experiences of menopause and at the same time our research showed as well that um, not everyone's menopause is bad and that's the other thing I want to talk to you your listeners about that you know the fear factor at the moment of menopause is quite incredible with all the the media that you read about the HRT and about not being able to get it to be able to get it you know should everyone be taking it it feels very HRT conversation and very workplace conversation when actually you know, back to that normalization, our research showed that not everyone's menopause is bad, but equally the majority of women will say, ah, my menopause isn't that bad. Now in a 21st century world, Daria, doesn't not that bad suggest it could be better? And don't we as women deserve a better experience of it? So Gen M is all about uniting the biggest brands to actually commit to not only help raise the awareness of menopause but actually learn over the next few years to serve it better for customer and work colleague alike because um would you be surprised to know there are 48 symptoms of menopause at the moment 
and yet the majority of women, never mind men, can only name between three and five symptoms. So until we raise the awareness of menopause better and understand for ourselves the symptoms, how can we expect brands and, and retailers to serve us? How can we expect the workplace to live the best policies when even if they put the most incredible policy in right now, if our research is, 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 is right as we know it is, well, the majority of women won't even know that they're actually in menopause or going through it to be able to apply them to, to the menopause policy. So, you know, for us, in a normal, natural world, it's about normalising the conversation. And Gen M believes there's three different transitions to the vision of the Gen M vision. The first one is we have as a society to raise the awareness of menopause and its symptoms. Make quite clearly there's 48 symptoms out there and actually have better knowledge of them. They're not all, they're not all going to kill you or anything else. In fact, you know, many of them from brittle nails to anxiety, there's a whole wide range of physical, medical and clinical symptoms out there. And like I said, some women might get two or three, some might get all 48, but everyone's menopause is different and how we handle it needs to be adapted to that. So we need to raise the awareness of menopause to men and women. We also then need to normalize the conversation because until we normalize the conversation, it will always be a taboo. And as a taboo, we'll never break down barriers and we'll never actually treat it as that um, audience um, that needs better respect, understanding and, and serving better. And then the third part of this whole Gen M vision is we must get to the part where we look positively at this period of life. We look to celebrate this period of life. We look to acknowledge that the women in it are the most experienced of, of their lives. They're probably the most skilled and talented they've ever been, then probably if they can get on top of and take control of their menopause, the most confident they've ever been, the financially the most secure they've ever been, whichever social demographic, it's likely that in their period of life, they've got more cash. And actually, we are the biggest decision makers for buying and everything else. So why wouldn't we want to actually, you know, bring out this, this audience and, you know, right now, we are the biggest growing dem demographic in the working population. Women over 40 has never been growing as much as it is now. So to the economy, to, the, to our relationships, to our families, to society, we've got huge, huge assets to give and actually huge assets to value ourselves better of as well because I don't want to just blame society here for actually why we are where we are. We as women need to value ourselves better as well. And, you know, I say that as a woman of 53 who often has put herself at the bottom of the pile of things to look after, things to do, everybody else takes a priority. Well, in menopause and perimenopause, we have to put ourselves as a number one priority. And the reason why I say that is because if you don't take control of your menopause, your menopause could take control of you. And then you're neither use nor ornament to your family, to your friends, to your life, to your job, to your career. So actually, whilst ever we're be thinking oh we have to serve others before ourselves actually the 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 most least selfish thing we can do is serve ourselves through menopause and then the rest will take care of itself so please don't think i'm looking at blaming work colleagues and anxiety on this we all have a part to play so let me take a breather now and take some oxygen and you can ask me another question <laughs> daria just there <clears throat> <clears throat> I love it. Everything. What uh, did you say? There is lots of uh, wisdom. Um, I love the science part uh, that you brought those stats, and that's very important. Um, the intuitive part of it is also very important, and that's what I uh, say always about HPM wellness. We are art and science that comes together because that's who, what is human being. We are not just the numbers. And this is the way I work with my, uh, with my customers. And um, one thing, uh, it's beautiful what you said about, the, uh, about an opportunity. And I see this as an opportunity. And, I, uh, and I, I am so happy that you stress out. It's not just about blaming someone. Women need to work on themselves to pass over this uh, generational conditioning to how we see ourselves, how others see us. But we have to start with ourselves. And that is one thing that 
um, from my experience, women need to get more aware of. No one is going to do job for us. Yeah. We have to do it, right? Absolutely. And if we can also remember as well, because obviously we as women, we are that purposeful kind of, of person. That's what, what, what we are. We want to see society as better. We want to make the difference that we can see. But we've been given an incredible asset that no other generation in life has ever had. We, are, I'm 53 years old, and my generation of women are the first generation to have the opportunity to live longer post-reproduction than pre-reproduction. Now, I don't know about anyone else on this podcast, but I don't want to live it a longer life if I'm not going to be healthy and be able to do all the <laughs> things I've ever wanted to do. Do you know what I mean? So actually, I want to be the best version of myself for, for my family, for my friends, for me, myself. I want to look good. I want to feel good. I want to feel energized. And I want to be able to, to own my age. And actually, the only person who can do this for us is ourselves. And then with society adding on and supporting us in every which way they can on top of it. And obviously, you know more than many, many, many people, Daria, the importance of health and wellness through this, that actually, you know, one of the biggest obstacles is that I'm, I feel is happening right now with menopause is that because of the conversation about HRT and about about going to the doctors that it feels like oh if I go or my partner or my friends suggest well get yourself to the doctors you'll be sorted it isn't a silver bullet and actually it could make you feel a bit better or in fact it could get rid of some of your symptoms but it's not going to make you feel great you can make yourself feel great you know you can make yourself feel good better good or great now in life I've always been the half full if you can be great why wouldn't you be great if you can feel the best version of yourself why wouldn't you so we have a, a, a role to play in understanding that nutritionally exercise you know the change changes everything and in accordance with that we have to change how we see life as well because I was always hit hit exercise I got off on if I didn't get sweaty it wasn't worth getting out of bed for if I wasn't impacting every joint and really no pain no gain I was full-on exercise and actually you know you come to this period of life and you know and and again I would never say any more about yoga and Pilates but I used to think it was just like oh no I can't be bothered with that you know I really want to get sweaty it's just for those who just don't want to do any proper exercise. Well, having now done yoga and Pilates, believe me, I absolutely respect everyone who's good at yoga and Pilates because the change to your body, the change to your mindset, the change to your, the strength that you get from just being able to control every muscle and breathe properly is, is amazing and we undervalue the importance of it. But moving from HIIT into strength exercise and yoga and Pilates, I've never been as fit in my life. And yet I was a four or five times in the gym a week person running all the time. And yet I've got my best body shape that I've ever had purely because I've changed to what my body needs now. I've done more strength. I've done more exercise. I've done more breathing. I've done more yoga. But on top of that, I've changed my diet as well. And again, you know, for many women out there, especially of my age, we were the tester dieters. You know, it wasn't about yo-yo di your dieting. It was more about everything was tested on us from the Atkins diet to the Cambridge diet to the cabbage soup diet. You know, it was all our generation were built on calorie deficit. You know, lifetime, what a minute on your lips, a lifetime on your hips. I can name all the phrases that we've had to, to learn and do. But never once was it about nutrition. It was about calories. And actually, it was about the size we were rather than, rather than how we, our body felt and what was the best weight for our whole body as a whole. And so we are nutritionally deficit in knowledge and education. And we are the worst generation. I'm hoping that the generations below us, and I know we'll be much more savvy on the proteins, the, the, car, you know, the whole knowledge of, of the dynamics of food. But as soon as I change my diet, to have more omega-3, to have more oily fish, to have more beetroots and different things that would actually enhance my experience better. They weren't going to get rid of my menopause, but they could help me with my brain fog. They could help me with my energy. They could help me. You know, I was once, I read an article once and I still, I was 19 years old. You can have one apple, four apples or one Mars bar. And it was like, look at this for a lark. I'll take the Mars bar. Why wouldn't I divide a Mars bar up all day and just have a nibble on that? You know, but what was the nutrition in the Mars bar? 
I wasn't even interested in it. So what I'm trying to say is let's not look, look to it being a big, huge difference in our lives, but we have to acknowledge if we haven't altered our nutrition by the time we're in our late 40s, early 50s, you're going to have to start it sooner or later if you want to be the best version of yourself. And for any woman on here or any man who's in their 20s, start now with that better knowledge of nutrition and get on with it. If you're like me and you've taken no interest in it, but the calories and, and the weight scales, actually throw your weight scales out and look to actually look at a healthier diet. And, you know, it's it's there for the taking. So, um. So yes, yeah, so, you know, I do believe we've got to have the holistic approach to life now. And, you know, there's too many things in life that are Instagram, you know, everything's right now. Go to the doctors, get your HRT, and within three weeks, hey, presto, you'll be a new version of yourself. Well, actually, some things are worth investing in and taking time. You don't plant a seed and hope that it's going to be flourishing and flowering within a week's time. You nurture it, you water it, you put it, you put it in the right soil, you give it ingredients. Well, treat yourself to be that beautiful plant that you want to grow grow and actually realize it's a it's a long-term process this and actually the best things in life come from cultivating looking after and actually preparing yourself for and i want more women to be better prepared for menopause and flourish in this time and show to be the brightest flower that they've ever ever been in that period of life so anyway next question daria i, I love it uh, i love it heather um you know how you bring in and uh, how you're creating positive uh, uh, feelings around and uh, just one only fact and i'm moving to uh, to the next question um but this is the reason why um, I've been like oscillating for a while. Who am I supposed to start to serve? Because I am now 41. I will be 42. It is, I'm never going to be that crazy athlete as I used to be. And I already realized this after my 30s because I knew that I have to change the way I train, the way I eat, the way I approach uh, everything. And then you see there is nothing. For women 35, 6, 7 and up, forget about women 40. And they are following still the same approaches from health and nutrition that they are prescribed for the ladies age um, uh, 20, right? Yeah. So that is one thing. But another thing is uh, coming back to your research on uh, workplace. Um, uh, I found research that... Uh, 50% of women who are starting businesses, female entrepreneurs, actually are 40 plus. And I ask myself question, if those women starting businesses and we already in this disadvantages that we discussed before and we need to work on it without blaming anyone, how those women going to run business in the next three, four, five years, when they start the perimenopausal symptoms, right? Yeah. And, and again, what we can't afford in this world of equal opportunity, and we've never had it as good. I mean, I'm not saying it's brilliant, but we've never had the opportunities that we've got for careers and for business and for setting up businesses we've got. You know, we can't afford to not be the best version of ourselves. And we can't, it's not like pregnancy where we can take nine months off. And I don't mean nine months off because anyone who's had a baby knows it's not exactly nine months off or whatever. You've got other things to be doing in that time. And I don't take it d diligently on that. But actually, you know, menopause and perimenopause can last for 10 years. And actually, you know, they can start as natural menopause. Um, any t you know, by the time a woman's 40, she's already probably showing three to five symptoms of perimenopause that she isn't even aware of yet. So we need to actually better understand this better and we need to prepare for it. We need to educate ourselves and we need to start actioning it because I do believe for too long, We've chosen to ignore it as women. We've chosen to bury our head in the sands. Even women of your generation now are going, oh, menopause, that's still in my 50s. That's miles away yet. It won't affect me. Well, actually, you know, if you know you're going to run a marathon in your 50s, you're not going to sit back and just not do any exercise till like the weekend before it or go out and buy yourself a pair of running shoes that weekend. Do you know what I mean? It's Yes. Look at how we've treated our lives. We've gone through our education. We've chosen what degrees or, 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 or apprentices or however we've done in life. We've chosen often when we're having our children, when we're not, you know, and when is it best to, to gauge things forward. We plan for everything in our lives from holidays to time off to career projections to financial 
pensions and everything else that we might put in our lives. So why do we let the biggest thing that could knock us back actually be ignored? We can't afford to ignore it. And the better prepared we are for menopause, the better experience of it we will have. That's a known fact now. We've got enough women who have gone through menopause to have these sort of stats. And, um, you know, my generation will be the last generation to, to actually have to Google the word perimenopause when we're actually in it. You know, by all means, I want 13 year olds to Google perimenopause and boys and girls as well to understand that this is that this is there because, you know, when you look at puberty as a society, we all knew whether we were the, the teenage girl or boy going through it or our parents, our parents were getting worried about it when we were nine years old going, oh my God, the teenage hormones are going to be changing soon. It's going to be hell. They're going to be monosyllabic. They're going to be spotted. They're going to be overwhelmed. They're going to be anxious. And um, we as, 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 as teenagers to be knew that these huge things were going to happen to us and we'd get, we'd lose our, our control of our emotions. We'd, uh, and we'd, we'd, we would get spotty and we would sometimes, you know, just want to slam the door and shut ourselves in a room for no other reason but we just wanted to be by ourselves now that was accepted by society our parents knew that was going to happen so they supported us through it they gave us a hug you know made you a cup of tea and got you a biscuit when you'd had a meltdown or whatever you try being a 53 year old woman slamming the door having a meltdown have, you know it doesn't look the same or act the same when actually it's the same sort of thing it's like the adult teenager again uh, but we can be better prepared for it and we can do so much more so you know i'm asking society to understand it better but i'm also understanding it we don't want it as normal behavior because it's not normal behavior and we can make our experience of it better i'm not saying we won't have days where we want to slam the door i won't we won't have days where we might just want to just have a good cry in the in the supermarket aisle or wherever it might be but equally, we have to understand that there's ways we can accommodate it in our lives. And if the perimenopause and menopause is going to be with us for up to 10 years of our life, why don't we treat it as a friend? You know, I've got, you know, if, if the greatest friendships are, are based on, on, on long term. 10 years is a long time to have to live with something. If I'm going to live with perimenopause, I want it my best friend, not my enemy. Mm. And you know, it's sleeping with me, it's living with me, it's going on holiday with me. If you're going to go on holiday with a girlfriend and have, you know, 24-7 with them, you're going to make sure that you really like that girlfriend and you work out everything to do together to support your relationship. And that is what we need to do with parent menopause. Embrace it as our new best friend. And, that, you know. That's why, that's why when we met uh, first, I talked a lot about prevention and the stage to entering into the menopause because there is so many things that can be done from natural way like you said that uh, correct training nutrition relaxation reduction of cortisol and everything there is a uh, this uh, field of precision medicine that is bringing us and regenerative regenerative medicine that is bringing us so much uh, hope so that is what is my mission with my brand to bring this more uh, more forward so more of us are enjoying and creating beautiful businesses after 50s right we have so much to give and uh, nurture of the world and i think world need to hear us i'm just looking through the question you're just going beautifully through them heather let's explain once again what is the, an invisibility report well the invisibility report is the report that uh, sam and i had we, we published to make sure that we had a business and that actually we weren't just imagining that we were just two women who felt unseen unheard <laughs> undisturbed do you know what Locker. i mean it was like yeah um three three nearly four thousand um women in midlife were were interviewed and, and researched on this and the stats absolutely were quite profound you know from how they felt about brands to how they felt about society to how they felt like down in the workplace to how they felt unseen in the workplace um you know it went right across so we could use that as this is how we feel now because menopause is very much about the symptoms in the conversation not about how we're feeling and how the impact this has on us but equally if through that overwhelmingness and anxiety we may be having as a menopause woman and we 
feel unloved by our partners, we feel unseen by brands. Well, actually, then if they then carry on and do things that make us feel like that, like the brand, we look at adverts, we can't see ourselves in them. They're either really young or really, really trendy white haired women who actually are just looking beautiful. You know, we're not seeing authenticity. We're not seeing reflections of ourselves. And it's great what the celebrities are doing right now, but many women, you know, can't see themselves as though those women either you know it's all right for them they're they're wealthier than as they can have a private doctor they can do all the right you know many women you know when i say 15 and a half million women in menopause and not, not all of them look, will want to look like or be davina and again this is not against davina because she's an incredible advocate and someone's got to start somewhere but we actually have to have more authenticity and inclusiveness across society of what we represent and so our invisibility report was what we built the business on so we could go to brands and organizations and say you've got a role to play here this is how society and how women feel you can make their experience of this feel better through the campaigns you do, through the advertising, to the merchandise you produce, and equally, understanding those 48 symptoms, they could then go, oh my gosh, we've got plenty of products that can help those symptoms. We can't, but mess up, when I say help, menopause friendly in the fact that like climate controlled bedding isn't going to get rid of your hot sweats but it is going to make your night of health, so that's the experience of them, better. And many women have written to me saying, why would I need to spend so much money on, you know, climate controlled bedding when I'll just use the bedding that I've used because that, that's getting knackered anyway, for want of a better word, with all my hot sweats. And I'll treat myself to some new, new bedding when I've got rid of my hot sweats. I'm like, going, you could be in that bedding for the next 10 years. And secondly, Proper climate, climate control bed, controlled bedding will wicker you, will take away the, 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 the sweat, but it'll stop you shivering when you've had that hot sweat and you're laying in damp clothes. So to me, why would you make your experience worse? You know, it's like, so there's the clothing, there's the nutrition, there's the, you know, the clothing, you know, it's not about asking us all to become midlife women or frumpy or anything else. And that's no offense to frumpy women in midlife. It's your choice how you want to look. But, you know, that acknowledgement, where can I find breathable shirts that might accommodate my hot sweat or I might, I might be fluctuating in my weight? How can I still look trendy, but actually have something that's going to look good? How can I go out on an evening in clothes that I'm going to feel comfortable in and still the best version of myself? We need that better understanding from the silks and, and, and the linens that we might wear to the actual styles, but we still want to feel the best version of ourselves. Because again, you looked at what went socially last year. There's a tweet that went out that showed um, the golden oldies. I don't know whether you'll remember a series of the golden oldies. It was about five American women who were uh, you know, having fun in life. Uh, 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 and then you've got the, the women of sex on the city, in the city. And those sex in the city women were two years older than the golden oldies. But actually, most women now want to see themselves as the sex in the city, still vibrant, still active, still attractive, still, you know, the best version of themselves. Whereas the golden oldie tribe were very much looking like older women. Well, we don't want to be that anymore. We don't have to be that anymore. We don't need to be it. And so we need to tra transform everything. And brands do have a role to play here on helping us be that best version of ourselves from, as I said, the change changes everything from the hair shampoo we might need to use to the body creams, to the clothes we might need to wear, to the nutrients and the supplements that we need, to the, to, to, to the, to the food and the exercise. As I said, the change changes everything. And we have to encourage businesses not to look at this as a workplace issue, which the media are pushing them into. What are you doing for your employees? How are you making it better? If they treat it as a business issue rather than a workplace issue and understand that menopause impacts every division of their business from their marketing to their comms to the merchandise to the new product development to the services they provide then men and women will in the, within that organization will get interested in this will get excited will think together because we have to bring the inclusivity of menopause together impact it impacts everyone 
directly or indirectly, whether you're the woman or the person in trans going through it, to your friends, your colleagues, your work colleagues, to your family around you. The highest rate of suicide, the highest rate of divorces, the highest rate of women leaving the workplace now are in this period of time. And actually those numbers have got to be reduced considerably. And the only way we can reduce them considerably is to have a better understanding of menopause, support it better and influence. So we have a whole role to play here, but back to the brands and the organizations. There is a positive, purposeful menopause pound to be made here or lost. And that's in the retention and attracting and, and the, of, of great talented women in the organization. But it's also about serving that market as well, whether it be through the products that they service to the, to, through, through the products that they sell to make that experience better, right through to the new product development that they might create and the new markets they might create specifically for menopausal people. So, you know, we have to understand that money makes the world go around. It's not a dirty thing. It's actually, if you look at the commerciality, if you look at the gender agenda in full, it wasn't until the McKinsey report came out in 2009 that business that showed that women who, who work in organizations and are in the executive of organizations, those out organizations outperform financially and behaviorally the organizations that don't have women now anyone who thinks that we did it because it was the right thing to do are, are fooling themselves most of those businesses did it because it was commercially the right thing to do and when they re realized they were losing money then they changed their purpose and it was a win-win for everyone don't get me wrong on this it was a purposeful way to look at it and again if by brands coming on board the menopause journey and understanding it and serving it better in a better purposeful commercial way and that makes us be it better for life in general it's a win-win for us all because right now as i said daria women are in menopause are underserved unseen and we deserve better so you know bringing the biggest organizations the biggest brands to now normalize this we can have this done by a week on wednesday and we can start looking at the rest of the, the issues in society that we need to change but hopefully that's helped you in some way daria understand more about what we're doing and then um, you know we are calling out we've got 60 plus brands on board now and some of the biggest ones in the world and also we've got a lot of startup brands who are who are who have got global potential companies like empowder and lima and modi body small companies compared to your marks and spencers and who actually know that they're building products and services for this incredible audience of women who do need need better and so if you're a business or an organization and want to find out about the collective of coming together the power of the collective having the right research reports having the right articles bringing thought leaderships to get events together that actually unite these brands to understand this audience better that actually then will launch the first menopause awards that actually um the, the awards are released and, and, and announced in september but by bringing these sort of things together and celebrating the good that companies are doing celebrating the great products and the campaigns and encouraging better you know we're a pilot in the uk um, and I say that not as a pilot that's here today, gone tomorrow, we will, we will have 100 brands on board by this time next year. But what we are is a pilot for the world. We are going to be rolling out the Gen M model right across the world, starting in America, then to Australia and New Zealand and the English speaking countries first, because they seem to be the head of the conversation at the moment. And then over time, Gen M will be the global partner, menopause partner of brands. And that's not a bad place to be because the collective can make a difference here. And so we would love any organization, however big or small, to get in touch with us and want to join Gen M and be the change that everyone wants to see. Is this just like you so prepared? <laughs> I love it. I, I it's, it's, coming, it's coming from your heart, uh, Heather. That's why I, I said I had read some uh, interview and I was like, oh, just they send me questions and I'm like, you know what i know the stuff it's coming from your heart you went through it you did your research you know what is going on the mission is fantastic from my clinical practice i know that this is the right place place to go those women uh, uh, as you were explaining we want to make it perimenopausal and menopause a beautiful time and i see a space of an opportunity because as you mentioned um those women already should be feeling 
no judgment, not who I am, not who I become. You know, this is that 30, 40, when you are trying to figure it out, what someone tells about me. Here, you are very established. You already achieved. You had possibly children. Maybe you had husband. Maybe you had partners. You broke this down. You went through this overcoming. And now is that amazing opportunity for you for next 20, 30 years to keep existing if you are in this mental, physical, and emotional fitness and shape. Uh, body is unbelievable and you talked about a healthy longevity who wants just longevity this is like trend let's talk about longevity i'm like i don't want to live long if i have symptoms all around my body and i feel just ho horrible right so um heather anything else you would like to add you cover the business how business how businesses can contact you what are the details here well obviously our site is www.gen-m.com we've got a contact page there it gives you all the information but if you're a woman or, or any anyone male or female on, on this podcast who thinks that you can't do anything you know i i'm i don't work for a big organization or i i don't work at the top of an organization everyone can make impact so if you feel that what you've heard today, you believe your brand or your organization you're working for should get involved here, do send a message out to your executive. Say, have you heard about this company? We think that you'd, you, you, we should be part of it. You know, anyone can make change happen, but equally, everyone can help normalize the conversation. So I'd ask anyone right now on this podcast who isn't aware of the 48 symptoms of menopause to go on to our site and check out our symptoms page. We've done it in a very simple, colloquial way. That's not to put you off. It's just to actually encourage you to say, well, there's more I need to know about menopause, whether that's a woman entering it or going into it or, who, or a friend who might think their friend is, is going into it, a daughter or a son who might think their mother is into it, in, in it. Have a look at them because actually we've also got tips for what the person going into menopause can do for themselves, but also what you as a supporter of that person can possibly do for some of those symptoms to help them accommodate it. So please don't fear it. What we need to do is take the fear out of menopause and actually know that we're all there to take women through it. But actually, we don't want to be victims here. I, you know, life, life for women of our generation, we've been victimized a lot. You know, it's, we've always been the sort of, you know, we need to change things for the better. I don't want to be seen as a victim here. I want to be seen as someone who can actually, in, is, is in a part of life that could be difficult, but actually, I have control to make it the best version of it I, I can. And, and I would call out to people to have a look at that as well. So look at the symptoms. But equally, any woman who's actually at the moment in denial of their menopause, look truthfully and openly at yourself. And actually look at some of the things, as you said, that you've gone through in life. You might have gone through a divorce. You might have gone through kids. You might have, we've all been challenged at times, but we've always been strong and got through each of those periods of our life in the best way we can. If you are in a moment of time now where some of the, you are getting overwhelmed and, and not coping and falling out with yourself or falling out with your family or falling out with your work colleagues over things that once upon a time would have never mattered diddly squit to you or you would have stopped solved before you'd even got out of bed if those sort of things are becoming a big thing look to yourself and go would the same person as me have been able to cope with this two years ago and if you can honestly say you could have coped with these situations even aging parents and chris you know Aging parents shouldn't be that big a daunt for us because we've possibly had children, we've possibly had hard careers. You know, this is just another thing that we can juggle. If you, if everything is becoming overwhelming, look to think that actually you might be going into perimenopause and you need to look into it so that you can go back to tackling the big things in life and not feeling that the huge mountains, but the molehills. And actually, we all have problems in our life. We all have responsibilities we've got to take for, take care of. We all have ambitions that are unfulfilled that we need to drive ourselves forward for. But actually, we need to do all those enjoyably and be able to do them in the best way we can. And so if any of those trials and tribulations that of life, those obstacles you're going through right now, feel painful and hard work, 
look to yourself and see how possibly you could help yourself make them less hard work and, and breeze over them rather than be bruised, battered and, and exhausted through them. So that's what I'd like to, to pass on the message of that the menopause, we do need to actually start to look at it in a positive way and, and prepare for it, educate ourselves and embrace it with the right attitude. You know, we all go into water, we all go swimming and those that dip the toes in find it more painful to get in the water than if you just uh, jump in, submerge yourself and embrace it. So don't mess around with them menopause, accept you're going into it, accept you're going to have a menopause and embrace it, dive in, swim it and own it. That's all I'm saying. So um, please, I hope that it's helped everyone who's listening here and I genuinely love what you're doing in this space and we do need to look more to our health and our, our, our wellness side of life and value it better because we've only got one life and I think that's where I'd like to leave it we've only got one life what's yours going to be and make the most of it if you can and so thank you very much for this thank you so much uh, Heather uh, thank you everyone um, and you know just uh, check uh, Gen M website is very informative and as uh, Heather said you can always come back uh, to her if you feel you want to pass further the message this is the place to uh, go and partner with uh, Gen M thank you so much everyone mm -hmm.